right. Hey, friends. How we doing, friends? Good to see you. This is Andy. Coming at you again from here at Andy's World of Bass. Today I'm going to talk about some fretless playing stuff. Um, I try and practice pretty regularly on the fretless. It's not my first instrument, but it is an instrument that I love to play. And um, it requires a whole lot of different uh, nuances of touch and technique, intonation, etc. And uh, some of the th I'm going to show you a few of the things that I practice. And um, really, it kind of comes down to short, medium, and long, meaning are the notes that I'm going to play be like, are they just going to be short? Are they going to be short notes like that? kind of more of a medium legato kind of a thing? Kind of like that? Or are they going to be very long where you never never remove your, your left hand from the fingerboard? fretless it's a it's very much a, a different beast but my uh, the whole first kind of phase of my development on fretless was to try it was trying to be I was trying to be like hypercritical hyper paranoid really of intonation so I was just trying to play real short notes be because I mean if I'm being honest I was afraid to let a note ring to just land and let it ring and um, I was being, this is something that I did, and I think a lot of other people do. I was being overly, um, using, uh, being overly vibrato-ish. Every note was like that because I was afraid to just be. You see what I'm saying? I was, I was kind of apprehensive and worried about my intonation, so I was afraid to play long notes that didn't have any vibrato on I was afraid to leave my fingers pushing the string down once I played a pitch. it is to mix it up you know I'll, I'll intentionally um, think about double stops and about oh this could be a nice thing where I kind of where I do this little turn this if it's E um, you know it's like if it's over an E7 chord I'm playing the, um, the dominant 7 the six and the, and the four coming off the one I'm passing through the five so you can do that little turn a variety of ways you could go play them all short or you could let off on the let off on the sixth sixth and hold hold the fourth with a little vibrato, or you can leave the six down and add add the fourth, and you have a double stop. And then you can start to integrate. 
great. You know, um, doing glissando with double stops, where you're where you're moving the a chord, a two note chord, and sliding the whole thing out. That kind of a thing. And then, um, you know, the, another thing that uh, I'm just making this up as I go, I'm using some repetition, you know, uh, it's just the same melodic, it's, a, it's the same kind of melodic motif, but I'm just moving it down chromatically. You can do that with a lot of vibrato, a, a little bit of vibrato. to get the confidence going with your intonation to where you can just land. Land and stay. And not be. You know, I, I, I did that a lot before and I find that um, the more comp the more I practice and the more I evolve as a, as a fretless bass player, which don't no, it's not very far, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, I can just land things. And really, it offers you the best opportunity to evolve and improve because when you land, you're either in tune or you're not. And you, and you can correct. See, I was, my, my octave side was a little flat. Instant correction. Again, same thing. So to, to really work on intonation, you have to land notes. string onto the fingerboard and um, intentionally not using vibrato. The vibrato is just a tool. It's just a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, you know, it's an ornament. It's something that you can, that you can hang on the note. You could, like you hang an ornament on a tree, but really the note is the note and you need to be able to get it. to let the note uh, ring without vibrato. Then you start to add the, tastefully add, sprinkle in some vibrato here and there.
friends. There you go. This is something to think about with your fretless playing. Have a lot of fun with that. Hey, by the way, before I go, I want to mention that I'm playing through the Bergantino uh, Forte HP head and the um, New Extreme Vintage 212 cabinet. It's a badass rig. And I really, really love the sound of it with, with my fretless because it has this cool uh, BFT, Big Fat Tube um, update that you can put into the drive circuit and I have it engaged and have it at about uh, 35 or 40 percent turned up and I have the variable ratio compressor turned all the way up and both of those things add a lot of really nice harmonic character and uh, give it kind of a, a very sort of convincing um, lively tube kind of um, emulation so it uh, it just really sounds nice with the fretless bass. So this 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 amplifier and and the cab are just really very versatile. If you're kind of a, a tone hunter, you're the kind of person that likes to explore with lots of different sounds and likes to have a very kind of um, easy to um, navigate uh, EQ and enjoys uh, finding new sounds by using the variable ratio compressor and using the drive circuit and then blending it with the EQ in a variety of different ways, you can get 10,001 different sounds from the amp. And it's a really, really fun uh, kind of uh, flexible amp in that way. Um, some amps you kind of, you just kind of like an SVT or whatever, you just kind of turn the thing on and you put the knobs where you've always put them and you know that that's a good sound and, it, and you just go for it. Whereas this amp is much more exploratory. You can kind of play the amp almost like you play an instrument. And typically that's not my thing, you know, if I'm being honest. But uh, I've come to enjoy this amp for the reason that it's so flexible. And the different applications of it, like when I'm playing string bass through it, and when I'm playing my acoustic bass guitar through it, or when I'm playing a fretless bass through it, or whatever, a five string with rounds on it, or, um, you know, uh, a vintage P bass with flats on it. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of like ultra flexible in that regard. So kudos to Jim Bergantino and the cab is wonderful. It doesn't have a high frequency driver in it, it just has the two twelves in it and they're the, um, really great speakers that uh, Jim helped to kind of um, design and uh, they're kind of like a, a Neo speaker that doesn't necessarily perform like a Neo speaker uh, like in, in the ways in the negative ways that Neo speakers have performed in historically these ones are much more kind of heavy-duty and um, they uh, they have a really great kind of convincing vintage kind of tone, a very warm uh, high end coming off a of paper vintage tone. And um, it's just uh, kind of like super sophisticated while also being really easy to navigate. So kudos to Jim Bergantino. All right, friends, peace.